Welcome back to the Woodshop Nerdery. In this video, I'm going to go into way too much detail about dust collection. In fact, this is going to be a redo of a dust collection video I did a few weeks ago. The reason I'm redoing it is, well, I got a couple things wrong. Or, at least, I didn't get all the answers I needed. One of the things I got wrong is I didn't explain in the video why I was doing all these measurements. If you're like me and you're a fan of YouTube and woodworking videos on YouTube, no doubt you've heard about the canister style dust collection filters. I'm currently trying to decide whether or not to do the upgrade. I want to make sure that I've done my research and have some reasonable confidence that if I do the upgrade, I'll get some improvement out of it. I've watched quite a few videos and read quite a few articles about these canister style filters. One thing that they always bring up is that the bag filters are junk or ineffective or they let every single small particle through the system. I think that may be a little bit of an exaggeration. So I'm going to try to do some kind of measurement to see if I have a problem with small particles in my garage. I've had an inexpensive particle counter device tucked away in my garage for about four years. I'll use the sensor here to perform a series of tests to try to figure out if I have a problem with small particulates in my woodworking shop. Up first, still air. For the next test, I'll simply walk around in the still air and talk a little bit. We'll see how many particulates are stirred up by my movement. Next, I'll test the particulate counts while running my homemade ambient air cleaner. Then I'll get some readings while running my dust collector. And I'll get some more readings while running my belt sander, dust collector, and the ambient air cleaner. For comparison's sake, I'll take some measurements outside as well. I'll test the air in the front yard and at a second location in the backyard. I reviewed all the footage for the particulate counts and simply recorded the minimum and maximum in a spreadsheet and created these charts. The 0.3 micron particulate category shows that the outside air has far more particulates than the air inside my garage, even while running my belt sander and dust collector. In fact, simply walking around the garage and talking was quite a bit worse than actually running the woodworking tools. The 0.3 micron pattern also repeats for the 0.5 micron particulate chart. It also repeats for the 1 micron particulate chart, the 2.5 micron particulate chart. For the 5 micron particulate chart, our minimum values were all zero. Particles at this size settle out of the air quite quickly, and it's just not very likely that those particles make it into the sensor. And by the time we get to the 10 micron category, the sensor never read a single particle of that size. Since the 0.3 micron chart was so representative of the other charts, I want to take another look at it. Again, with my dust collector running while running a belt sander, which should be creating a lot of dust, and running the ambient air filter, the particulate count performance was better than both the outside air in both locations and when I was simply walking around the garage and talking without running any woodworking tools. My dust collector must be working pretty good if I'm getting these numbers. Something else I'm not sure I got quite right in the first video is the technique I used to make the cubic feet per minute measurements. I use this anemometer to make the measurements. It measures air velocity and if you plug in the cross section area of the pipe, it'll also automatically display cubic feet per minute. And while I don't think that this unit is defective in any way, I did start to wonder about the housing and the cross members here and the fan itself and whether or not those were slowing down the velocity of the air I was trying to measure. If they're slowing down the velocity, then the numbers that I was calculating for cubic feet per minute would be artificially low. 
So to try to answer that question, I've constructed a very basic pitot tube to try to verify the numbers I got in the first video. I've constructed a very basic manometer and attached it to my workbench. At the end of each hose, I've attached two tubes, which I'll insert into the airstream. I've also laid out my dust collection hose with as few bends and kinks in it as possible and stretched it out to its maximum length. To try to figure out if the housing and cross members of the anemometer are impacting my velocity measurements, I insert the static tube into the hose. This tube is positioned at a 90 degree angle to the airflow. When I place the device in the airflow, you can see the red liquid in the manometer changing height. The change is very pronounced with the four inch to two and a half inch coupling installed, but the change is quite a bit less without that coupling installed. My theory is that because the four inch opening is larger, it's less impacted by the device's housing and cross members. Next, I set up to measure velocity pressure. With a velocity pressure reading, I can calculate the airflow in feet per minute and the volume of flow in cubic feet per minute. The total pressure tube gets inserted parallel to the flow of air. And then a second tube to measure static pressure gets inserted perpendicular to the flow of air. The difference between the total pressure and the static pressure is by definition the velocity pressure, sometimes called dynamic pressure. The data I collected during my first video regarding dust collection indicated that a clean bag filter increased the CFM numbers. I'll give my bag a few taps and retake these measurements to see if it also makes a difference using this device. And here's the data. The first three column groupings on the left come from the first video where I used the anemometer to measure the airflow. The right two column groupings come from the data I collected using the pitot tubes in this video. So this data indicates to me a few lessons learned. The first lesson is that the anemometer was impacting the velocity and giving me artificially low numbers. Another lesson learned from this data, which was also a lesson learned from the first video, is that the four inch to two and a half inch reducer coupling is the main restriction of airflow in my system. In all of these data groups, installing the coupling vastly reduced the CFM measurement. Well, I think I have a few more answers than I did before. First, yes, the anemometer did add air resistance to the test. The structure of the fan housing and the blade did slow down the air. It looks like I'm getting quite a bit more air volume flow than I thought. Second answer is no. It doesn't look like I have a submicron particulate air quality problem. So to summarize, I was measuring quite a few more submicron particulates outdoors in the fresh air than I was indoors in my shop while running the dust collector and while also actively sanding on the belt sander. Now I will say I'm making some assumptions about this device. I I'm not assuming that it's accurate. So I'm not assuming that the absolute values reported by this unit are dead on. But what I am assuming is that if I take a measurement in one place that is higher than a measurement in another place that is lower, that those relative values of higher and lower are still true. So the conclusions I draw from this information is that the felt bag I have on my desk collector which is specced out at 2.5 micron, is doing just a fine job. I don't see a need to go to the pleated filter, at least based on air quality specifications. Now there is another argument for going to pleated filters. They do increase the surface area that the air is flowing through. The main restriction in my system is not the filter bag. The primary restriction in my system is the four inch to two and a half inch coupling reducer. And as I said in my last video, I can't get rid of that. All of my tools use a two and a half inch dust connection. So in summary, I'm not upgrading to a canister filter right now. I just don't see any evidence that it's going to create any benefit for me. Well, thank you for sticking with me to the end of the video. I really appreciate your support and participation. 
Please leave a comment. I love hearing from you guys. Uh, please like and subscribe if you feel I've earned it.